I definitely wanted you to go over how has this, um, these allegations affected the Zulu Nation. You said you know him personally. You know, I don't know if I should ask, do you believe it's true or not? But just, you know. I, I've been knowing Africa Bambada for maybe uh, 30 plus years. I've been part of the nation 30 plus years, almost 37 years. I've traveled the world with him. I've stayed at his house, stayed in mine. I have never seen any of that. That's me. I've never, that's never been in my attention span. It was not even a hinkle where I had to look for it or suspect it. I never saw it. So when I heard the allegations, I was just as baffled as everybody else. But that's my friend and my comrade, my brother. And I know him for what I know him for. And that's Africa Bambada humanitarian, Africa Bambada the pioneer, Africa Bambada music DJ, Africa Bambada knowledge. That's what I know him for. Do you think it's possible that these things were kept from not just you, but a lot of a lot of people? It's because it looks like in my research, Bronx River had their own this this nucleus thing going on, and then what they exposed to everyone else. Well, like I said, I've been around a long time. I'm not new to the nation. I'm I'm the fifth universal of the nation. I'm next in command. It's Africa Bambato. But when you make up the world, Supreme World Council, at the top is Africa Bambata, who is the founder, and Ahmed Henderson and me. So I'm in deep. If it was here, they did a good job. But I don't know him for that. I, I've heard things in the past, but I don't go off of that. I go off of what I know. And if this did happen, it is the great God of the universe, spoken in all those languages and tongues that everybody speak, that will judge that. And the ancestors, it's not me. It's never did that to me. It's never did that to nobody I know or around anybody I know. Now, when it comes to the Zulu nation, the Zulu Nation has nothing to do with that. But when, when this story broke with so Star, it broke and um, they kept hollering the Universal Zulu Nation. Now, I'm, I was at that time when the story broke, I was in Chicago where I live. And I was baffled because why are you saying this about us? You know, the things I heard about the Zulu. We don't have nothing to do with that. The Universal Zulu Nation is global. It's not no one little piece space of people in one little place. It's global. We're all over the world. Kings, king, kings, queens, Malikas, Akis, we all over the world. And I know us from doing some great works for my, my travels. I just come back from Colombia two years ago. Watch the Zulus down in Colombia build schools and, and teach the programs. I'm talking about real stuff. In the community, all the Zulu nation I know do the community. Africa Bambada, there's a myth. Africa Bambada runs the Zulu nation. He does not run the Zulu nation. The Zulu nation is autonomously powered, meaning each chapter governs itself. You follow the rules, regulations, and spiritual guidelines of the nation. That's what makes it the universal Zulu nation. The first thing we were ever taught was knowledge itself, and that was taught to the, the black man, the, the Latino man, the Indian man, the Chinese man, the knowledge itself, knowledge of who you are. That's what we know of. They singled us out and said the Zulu nation. And they showed some brothers from New York City. Now, I don't know what went on in New York City in the crevices and cracks, because I'm not in that. I live in Chicago and else, elsewhere. But I do know that they don't run the nation. That's been a myth for a long time, that they ran the nation. 
going to run the nation. The nation is too big for you to run like that. You see, the structure is not intact like that to run the nation. Now, the teachings run throughout the nation, throughout the world. But the Universal Zulu Nation is an organization built on community structure from those four elements of hip hop and that fifth element, the knowledge. That's what we do. So it was unfair of people to say the Universal Zulu Nation, you see? And I guess some of the brothers in New York that's closer to that part of the family felt it on themselves to apologize. And to me, I felt that you had nothing to apologize for. You see, you, it wasn't you that did this. It wasn't you that's being accused of this. Now let's, let's go to this, because we say accusations. We say somebody is accusing your word against mine. Now, I feel compassion if this happened to these brothers and anybody this has happened to. I feel compassion for them. And I hope they have love and strength and power to overcome this. But these are accusations. Somebody's accusing you. They didn't bring you up on no charge. I heard the statute of limitations ran out. And all that. No, 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 no. Still things that can be done. And then I asked the question, why did you wait so long to do this? Now, I heard many people come and say when I, you know, when I say that, well, it takes a long time and they don't know how they've been suffering. No, 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 no. I'm not going to suffer 30 years with something like that as a grown man. And it affects my life. I'm going to get it out for me. Why did you wait so long? Everybody wanted Africa Bambada to answer these questions. Well, we don't answer accusations. We answer charges. We don't answer accusations. Somebody accused me, it's my word against yours. Now you have, the, you have the authority and the power of self to answer that. And only you and the great God of the universe and those ancestors know the real answer. KRS-One jumped in it. I just run through it. He jumped in it. Chris said something that I think a lot of people, they went off emotion. Social media is damaging the emotional level of people because we believe anything. I see stories, all kind of stories of people that died and they ain't even dead and silly stuff that people are making up. And social media has way popular opinion has corrupted a lot of spiritual powers in people because they believe this thing. They put their business out there on it every day. Karis once said something on a radio program and everybody took it and blew it up. It was like I, it was like I say about Martin Luther King. When you hear Martin Luther King, you hear I have a dream, the speech. But you never hear what he said at the beginning of the speech. You only get to the I have a dream part. That's the part that lock and load with you in your psyche. He said that he didn't care about that. He meant exactly what he said. He did not care about that. That was not his problem. Why are you asking him about that? That is Africa Bambada. That's his situation. Not mine, not Karis ones, not nobody else's. Why don't you ask me about the killing in the streets with, that the music is causing? Why don't you ask me about the hip hop? and where we're gonna take it to and how we're gonna build some communities and a nation and then change and heal some things. Nobody asked him questions. His statement was that. He didn't care about that. We got much bigger things to do. Got more things to do. That's Bambada's business. And the whole world attacked him. I, I thought that was very unfair because nobody really listened to what he was really saying. They just went off a sound bite, a part that they grabbed. I, I got tired of watching that. I got tired of every time I cut the internet on, it, it had this nasty story on it. And I felt so bad for the, the brothers that were being drugged through the mud who were in the story, including the ones that are said to be the victims. 
on and on and on and on. What point are you proving? If you said you didn't want nothing from Bam, you got it off your chest. You got it out there. Now, why are you still doing this? Why are you still promoting it? Well, who's making the money off of this? I watch black media attack us. I didn't see white media do it. I saw one headline in a newspaper, but I didn't see them. I saw black media, our own, do it to us. I saw brothers riding off this story so they can get more ratings, so they can get more commercial time to make more payola off that internet. And they sensationalized it. And it demonized Africa Bambara. I am not about demonizing him. He's my friend, my comrade, my brother. He'll always be that. I just hope whatever happened, that light be shed on it and both parties get peace from it. That is the wishes of myself and the Universal Zulu Nation. I speak for the nation. If nobody else speaks for him, I speak for him. Two things. Now, you know, um, when, when me and my age group, peer group, whatever, growing up with this music, right? So like, I'm from Chicago too, and I didn't know anything about the Zulu Nation and, unless somebody dropped the name in the song or something like that. So you, you, I'm just saying on behalf of the general public, you have to imagine how huge this, it's like KRS-One and all these guys are like part of our whole, my whole experience, like all the songs, my high school experience, like every, my life, that's my, the soundtrack of my life kind of thing. So for him to say that, you have to know, you know these people personally, but for, for fans or just people who came up on the music of the teacher and all that, that was a, that was really big. I just wanted to tell you that, 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 that you know, if something is a part of your psyche and to hear him say that, it was just like, oh my God, like him explaining it like, you know, you know, that's between that well, he and, said you it know. nonchalantly. He said, and, I don't give a fuck. Like, well, that's nonchalantly. Like, that's, that's, and he, he talked like hip hop talk. Yeah. He would have said, I don't care. Well, that's not care as one. He said it the way he said it. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Why are you really asking me this? We got more things to do than that. But that's not for him to say. Like he, but it is for I'm him just, to I'm say, just say, saying me personally. If you came and asked me that, I will respond to you in the same way, maybe not with the same words, but in the same way. That is embarrassing to ask me that. People ask me this But he's all the prophet and the t I'm just, you know, I don't want to argue. I just want to tell you that okay. it, that was huge okay, for but, us, but, but for him there. to because say Because you say he's the prophet and the teacher. According to himself. All right. But when Karis one was writing the gospel of hip-hop, nobody made a story out of that. Nobody uplifted that. When Karis one came against human education against lies, and they may raise money and, and, and to stop the violence movement, and they raised all that money and gave it to the NAACP, and they ripped us off. Nobody wrote a story about that. When Karis one kept his career going by going to universities, creating a, a temple of hip hop, you see what I'm saying? And, and bringing hip hop to the forefront of communities to teach community programming and organization. Nobody writes a story about that. So when the man gets, when you ain't writing no stories about that, but now you say this about him, and you know you say this to him, I would respond to you too, the same way. Because people ask me this all the time. All the work that I put in, you'll creep up next to me and say, man, well they know not to come straight out with me with none of that. They all say, man, what do you think about the Africa Bambada issue? And my first response is, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't know nothing about that. I mean, why are you asking me that? Ask me about the Lord Cassius D issue. Ask me about the KRS-One issue. Ask him about that. That was unfair to him. 
Now, the words he said might have been strong, but everybody acted emotionally because the story touched emotions. So when it touched emotions, you want to you 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 hear somebody famous and you want to you, you want them to say, "Well," and it say it the way you want them to say it. But all of a sudden, he said it the way he said it, and it shocked everybody. He said. I don't give a fuck about that. And I can imagine the look he had on his face. He had that look like, ah. I can imagine that look he got on his face when he said it. And everybody took that and they said, KRS One don't care about the kids. But I haven't seen nobody with an album that give more sciences of hip hop and its preservation, that great spirit that we all caught that saved my life and many others. I don't see nobody making albums like that. I don't see nobody doing the teaching like him. We don't even look at him as the teacher. Now we're looking at he don't give a shit about the kids. That's oxymoronic. How can you say that? We acted off emotions. We're acting emotional. Okay, it's a sad story. It's a sad day in hip hop to even bring this up. It's nasty. But if your emotions take over, then you have no reasoning for truth because you become super emotional and irrational. And that's what's happening to the people that's following this. Let's get to the divine truth. And it's not us to judge this. Those who have been wrong shall be righted and those that did the wrong shall be smited. The universe lets you get away with nothing. If Africa Bambada says he is the universal god of hip hop, meaning in the sense he has the spirit of it, he brought it and helped flourish it, then the universe is not going to let him get away with this if this is true. But what about the kids and stuff that are part of the Zulu nation that don't know Africa Bambada? Do they suffer? When this story broke, after it broke real good, we were working on a tour. Um, the tour was based in the mid, starting in the Midwest. It consists of seven, seven cities. It was all Zulu Nation. It was a tour that we had put together to um, exercise the leadership in each, in each part of the nation, in each city. Meaning that they had to create the tour. They had to have a nighttime event for club, monetary. We had to have a daytime event for community but we deal with the community. We always do it like that, fifth element. This tour was going on, everybody had lined up schools and all of this stuff. When the story broke, this destroyed a lot of what we were doing. At the same time, in major cities in America that have super infested gang problems, especially Chicago, we were introducing the peace code, something that we have been working on sitting at the table with the leaders of, and, and, of these organizations and trying to find out ways that we can use a new technique to bring light to the streets and help rescue some of our young people from this madness that's going on. Africa Bambada was in Chicago. Story hit hard. He was with me. And, and, and Brother King Kamazi, world spokesman of the nation, who has been traveling with BAM for the last 17 years, everywhere. You don't go nowhere without him. And I know Mars. I know King Kamazi. I know him very well. Like my brother. He is one of my brothers. And Mars would never stand for nothing like this. He would never condone nothing like that. It's not about that. We work hard in our communities, training young people, getting them ready for life, going into the schools, teaching the children that nobody want to teach, bringing Zulu, which means people of the heavens, to these young people, through these elements we call the culture of hip hop. When this story hit, this crushed a lot of stuff we were doing. We knew that the only damage control was, was no cover up, people not covering up, nobody cover up nothing. The only damage control that we had to do was to save our piece of the nation with the communities. What about the kids that didn't have that power, that were working on projects in other states, other countries? 
other parts of the world. When this hit, how it affected them, how it killed social programming, how it took the air spiritually out of things. It affected me to a greatness. I'm not gonna even, I, I can't even go into how it really affected me. It affected me very, very hard. And I had nothing to do with it. So I can imagine what it is, and I'm strong, and I'm with it. But I can imagine what it did to those that don't even know them that wrecked the flag of Zulu. See, that wasn't fair. But we also know that Africa Bambada created the nation. So it's gonna ride alongside with him, the name and everything. So it's gonna be affiliated, associated, and all the rest of them ate it. You know what I'm saying? We know already know that. But for the record, that nothing to do with the Zulu nation. Nor the Zulu nation's character worldwide. Too many great works going on. And to all my Zulu brothers, I always tell my Zulu brothers, my kings, queens, malikas, and akis, keep your head up. Operation Pool, Peace, Unity, and Love. Let's go forward with this. Bam has ran the nation in 15 years in a real structure. You know, he's, he's the founder. So as I met, so as quite a few others. But when it comes to the structure of the nation, the structure is built on the ideals of the young people and the kings and queens that run it. And they have nothing to do with this. Right now, we're, we're in Operation Pool, Peace, Unity, and Love, Try to put things together so we can finish our community work. We've been doing work for years. That's what it popped in for us. Now, you, I wanted to ask you how are, how are the uh, members doing now, um, a year later? And I was curious if you, you heard the phone call with like Mickey Benson and Mr. Biggs and like they, they, I mean, they kind of was out there. And then what about the meeting that took place with, allegedly with Bambada, where he admitted to this with Poppy? I just want to know if like, I definitely want to know how the membership is doing now. I and if don't, listen, Mickey Benson does not represent the Zulu Nation. I'm gonna say this again. Mickey Benson does not represent the Zulu Nation. Smitty does not rest, represent the Zulu Nation. Great brothers, they don't run the nation nor represent the nation. They are not the high officials of the nation. Maybe in New York in the Black Spades or one of them organizations there, but when it comes to the universe, the UZN, they don't run it. They have nothing to do with it. Those are mad friends, bam friends. I was there when that phone call took place. When it came in the first time the bam body, it was in Chicago. He was surrounded by the Zulus that love him because we were ready to defend him because there was too many threats coming in. We ain't, we ain't having that. We're not going to do nothing to our brother. Let the ancestors judge that if this is what it is. Let the great God judge it. But you man, you're not going to do that. When those phone calls came in, I also heard the thing about the money. I saw the extortion play. I saw quite a few things. People know Bambada got money. Bambada don't spend his money frivolously on booze and, and broads and bullshit. He don't spend his money like that. Bambada gives a lot of his money to humanity, to causes. He's a great humanitarian. Nobody talks about that. He, he talk about the children. You know how many people he didn't fed in them projects and throughout the world? How many people he didn't raise? You know how many people come out of him? When I met Bambada, I was a teenager. And he saved my life. I was supposed to be in prison right now. But I was looking for the perfect beat, and I found it. You see? So these new kids, these old heads that pop up, talking about they represent the Zulu nation, they part of the nation in an aspect. But you never see them in the fold of the family. When the events go down, you might see them at the concert when we go to the anniversary. They want to jump on stage and represent the old school acts and act like they big time and all of that. That's cool, y'all do that. But when it come down to the community, they're not there. That's what, that's what this Universal Zulu Nation is. It got nothing to do with all of that. We, we come off that music and quest and that funk. But our foundation is the community and the preservation of hip hop music and culture. And I'm just gonna state one more time, they don't run the nation. So all of that stuff that was going on, and even the interview with Poppy, I never saw that. I never saw it. I didn't even go look for it, because I don't wanna see nothing nasty like that. You know, but if 
this is going on, then bam, bada deals with this. It's got nothing to do with us. And I've never saw that. I've heard people say, oh, it was five people, six people, a hundred people. I've never saw but two. Where did all these other people come from? Why did this rumor spread all that? Five, ten people. Then they keep using the word molestation. When I hear this word, when they say he molested a child, the first thing we think is some little kids. This is the demonization of this word. It didn't say no, no teenagers who consent, who knew better. 15, 16, you know right from wrong. I'm a man. Somebody came around me and I was 15 years old and they wanted and I wasn't into men and you tried to do something like that to me and I can I can holler, scream, fight, tell somebody I ain't 10. You ain't say 10, you ain't say 9. You ain't say the immature age. You said 15 and better. I'm going to tell somebody. I'm going to fight. And you're not going to come do this to me 10 times. See? I'm going to tell somebody because I don't like men. Not like that. So if you come and force this on me, I'm going to fight. You ain't got no knife. You ain't got no gun. You ain't got no picture of my family tied up with dynamite around them. And you let this happen 10 times or greater than one, more than one time. You never said nothing. These are the things. I'm not calling nobody, you know, I'm not saying nothing. I just want to put the things on your people's mind because we acted emotionally. When the emotion climbed down, we have to talk the facts now. Let's talk the facts. Child molestation. Now, you got down by the, and when you see that word, you see little children. And that's the demonization of what's going on. And that's blocking the work that he's done. That is a way to actually, in the hearts and psychological sciences of mankind, to wipe him out of history and design to kill him. We have to look at what we do when we do these things. We have to look at do. For the Zulu Nation believes in factology versus beliefs. Meaning we weigh off the facts. We investigate it. We go deep into it. We look at the pros and the cons. We look at the up and the down, the day and the night in it. Then we take our consumption of judgment of humankind, but only judge out the spirit, of the great force, know what it really is and what it really do and who really did it. So I look at it like that. And that's my point of view on this thing with with, with, with Africa Bambada is such a sad thing too because I, 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 I'm just even a year later I'm, it's so hard because we got to go all over the country and throughout the world now and we got to repair what's been done we have to clean our name up and that's a sad thing because a lot of people lost a lot of stuff with this